universe, is mysterious as well as the most spectacular place, including bunch of mysterious, weird things. Also there are millions of stars shining all over. But ever wondered, how they initiate their journey? Let's explore it. Well, the journey begins with gas dust, especially known as interstellar dust. It is made of compounds of various elements such as oxygen, carbon, iron, silicon and magnesium. While hydrogen and helium make up most of the gases in interstellar space. Now, from where they come? We will explore it in the end of this episode. Nebulae are the general sources of these galactic dust. Most nebula are huge and span light years even millions of light years across. On average, nebulae occupy trillions and trillions of miles in space. For perspective, the Earth's diameter is just under 8,000 miles and the Sun is about 865,000 miles in diameter. The Earth was formed from the nebula that produced the solar system. It is almost universally accepted that the Sun, the planets and their satellites, the asteroids, and the comets of the Oort, cloud, grew from a cloud of gas and dust that contracted under its own gravity. Now star formation begins when the denser parts of the cloud core collapse under their own weight or gravity. These cores typically have masses around 10 rays to the power of 4 solar masses in the form of gas and dust. A molecular cloud is very cold, only a few degrees above absolute zero, which is the lowest temperature possible, also called zero kelvins. But, when gas and dust start to collapse in a region within the molecular cloud, it slowly heats up. When the collapsing region has reached a size of nearly 10,000 astronomical units, it is called a pre-stellar core. This pre-stellar core will later become the interior core of the star. Over the next 50,000 years or so, the pre-stellar core contracts. This might sound like a long time, but on an astronomical timescale it is considered a fairly swift process compared, for instance, to the age of the universe, which is almost 14 billion years. Imagine it is two hours from your whole lifetime. The core contracts until it is around 1,000 astronomical units. It is still composed of the same gas and dust, so this means the density of that matter is increasing as the diameter shrinks to one-tenth of the original size of the collapsing region. After 50,000 years has passed, the system will have formed a disk around the central core, and excess material will be ejected outward from the poles of the star. A pole on a star is like those on the Earth, namely defined as the axis that the star spins around. These jets rotates the core of star. This process causes a flat disk to form around the pre-stellar core. The system is now called a protostar, which means it is at its very first stage of becoming a real star. The disk is crucial for the protostar to grow into a properly sized star. The disk is mainly composed of gas, which rotates with the disk and slowly approaches the surface of the protostar. When the gas comes close enough to the star, it falls onto the surface of the star because of gravity, and the star grows. This process of growing is called an accretion process and the star is said to accrete or accumulate matter from the disk. Over the next 1000 years, the matter from the disk is either accreted by the star or expelled from the disk. The star has grown enough in size and density for the central region to initiate a nuclear reaction, which causes the star to shine, like the sun. At this point, the star is called a T Tauri star, and this is the first time that the star can be observed visually. The star eventually stops accreting matter from the disk, but the remaining material around the star is still in a disk-like shape. The disk no longer serves the purpose of feeding the star with matter to make the star grow. Instead, the disk is now just a circular moving plane of material, which will slowly start to clump together and orbit the star. These small clumps, made from the leftover material from the star's creation, will form new planets. This means that the planets in our solar system are made of the leftover material from the sun's birth. This is also why all the planets in the solar system are found in the same plane. Stars live different lengths of time, depending on how big they are. A star like our sun lives for about 10 billion years, while a star which weighs 20 times as much lives only 10 million years. Star always tries to be perfectly balanced as everything should be. The outward nuclear force is controlled by inward gravitational force. But when they exhaust their nuclear fuel, gravity wins. And the whole star collapse in its center, causing spectacular explosion in the universe, known as supernova. We have already made video on it, so don't forget to explore it after this episode.
This massive explosion yeets numerous star materials into space. And this is how we get our gas dust. The ending is a beginning for new star. That's it for now, I hope you learned something new today. To join this journey, explore the subscribe button and hit it. Let's explore all at one spot. Thank you.